Hello guys, this is Ash Rent and in this video I am going to take a picture of one of the most beautiful galaxies in the night sky. So let's get into it. So before the video starts, I just want to say thanks to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. It means a lot for me and uh, I hope in the future we're going to hit more distant uh, targets. Thank you for all these 350 subs and uh, I hope we, we will continue growing as the time passes. So this is what I want to say and uh, let's get into it. Because in the beginning of this video I didn't tell you which is the galaxy I am going to capture, it is M63 or the Sunflower Galaxy. It's a beautiful galaxy located in the constellation Canis Venatici and it's quite bright, easy to see with a telescope and if you're using a camera or you do astrophotography you're going to get very nice results, trust me. Because I have this intention too, this is how I am going to do this tonight. First, the telescope I'm going to use for tonight's project, it is the Skywatcher 150P, which is a fast Newtonian F5. The drawback of this telescope is the coma in the edges. If you don't know what coma is, it's like a distortion which happens at the edges of the image. So if I want to fix this, I need a coma corrector, which is quite expensive. So I just don't want to spend that much money on this thing. Now the camera is the Canon EOS 4000D, which is a crop sensor camera, DSLR. My life would be much easier if I had a mirrorless camera but this is what I have right now I'm just gonna continue with it and because I don't have this exactly right here where it belongs I'm gonna do guiding yeah the guide scope is the ZWDO Miniscope 30F4 it's really nice you can mount it on the fighter scope uh, bracket and uh, I have got very nice results on guiding with it and of course, the guide camera, without it we wouldn't do anything, it is the ZWDO ASI 224MC color camera. A dedicated planetary camera with a small sensor, but yeah, I have heard that monochrome cameras are better and that color cameras don't do a great job, but I have got pretty nice results with this. I don't know if I'm gonna invest on a monochrome camera in the future, like the ZWGO 120mm Mini, which is not only small but also a monochrome camera. Of course all of these things are mounted on the Skywatcher EQ3 mount in which I have equipped a motor drive in order to track the night sky and have better results in long exposure imaging. Okay, so as you can tell it's still daytime, it's seven and a half o'clock, it's early so I'm gonna wait about one hour in order to get everything ready, polar align my mount which is very important on galaxy photography because we have a higher magnification and we want the best tracking possible. Then I am going to focus my telescope which is also very important in order to get the sharpest details out of this galaxy. Tonight I have one good thing and one bad thing. Firstly, the good thing is that the atmospheric transparency looks very nice, which means that I am going to be able to see more stars and get better frames, which results in better image overall. Now on the bad thing, there is a 7% illuminated moon in the constellation Gemini which is not very good when it comes to broadband imaging and I don't have a filter which would help me but I'm just gonna go without any filter as I don't own one.
Okay, so right now I am going to launch APT and PAG2 Dragon. So this right here. And I am going to start the calibration process. It's very simple. All I have to do is to connect my equipment, firstly the camera, and start the calibration process. Something that I want to mention is that when I do the calibration, I, on my hand controller, which is this one, what I do is to reduce the tracking speed from 16 times to 2 times because in the past, when I started guiding about 10 days ago, I had it on, I had it set on 16 times, which wasn't really that good. The stars were drifting away too much and nothing could fix it. So I found out that two times is the best option. So if you are a user of the Skywatcher EQ3 mount and you have the same motor drive as me and you want to start guiding but you won't find the right way to do this, this is how you do it. You just set it to two times and you're going to be able to guide. Of course you, you need to find the right settings which is quite simple. I am going to leave the description of the settings I use on PhD2 guiding. So if you have the same problem like I had a few days ago, you can uh, use this preset and then uh, have a very nice guiding. Okay, so because I can see a huge cloud passing by and you can also see it here on the loop of PhD2 guiding, I'm gonna set up the plan for tonight on astrophotography tool okay so i am going to capture until 6 a.m which is when the sun starts to rise it's the dawn so this is un up until when i am going to capture this from yesterday 181 frames of 2 minutes but today because it's 8 hours from uh, right now up until 6 a.m. and if you include the guiding and, and all this stuff it's about 8 hours or less so I think that I am going to capture 200 frames of two minutes it's the perfect okay it says that the expected duration of the project is 400 minutes if i capture about seven hours of what i expect i think it's gonna be the perfect because not only I am going to reach 10 hours of total exposure, but also I am going to get very nice details on the Sunflower Galaxy, even with this moon out.